uh, believe that uh, financial education is something that is not taught in, um, in today around the world? And how many of you think that it should be, that it is an important uh, yeah. aspect of education? Thank you very much. <laughs> so, <coughs> click it. Right. Let me get rid of this. So, <coughs> okay, here we go. So, my name is Filippo Jacob. I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Pigsby. And what we're doing is we're reinventing the piggy bank for the 21st century. Uh, we fundamentally believe that uh, the token economy is on its way in and uh, the use of physical cash is on its way out and we need to find new uh, engaging and novel ways to allow families to connect around financial education, uh, but most importantly to introduce money and money principles to children in new and engaging ways that are relevant um, to the world that they live in. And we do this using Pigsby, which as I said is a piggy wallet and not a piggy bank. Uh, more importantly, it's a system, a hardware, digital, hybrid, piggy wallet. It's made up of four separate elements. The first one is the wallet token, which is a Swiss-based utility token that's designed to replace the physical 1Ps and 2P coins normally kept inside physical piggy banks. The second uh, element in our system is an application. For adults, it's a multi-currency uh, wallet, and for children, it's a Minecraft-like game where they can learn about financial education and about uh, 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 the concepts of uh, modern money uh, through gaming. Uh, if uh, any of you are familiar with Roblox, uh, for example, you would get an idea about how that works. The third aspect of it, which you can't really see very well on the screen, is this hardware device, which is a, um, a we call it a piggy wallet, and it's Pigsby. In its, uh, in its pink, uh, variety. It serves as the as the controller for the game, but also as a notifier to take the game outside of the um, of the gaming environment. And John over there has a demo uh, with uh, a game uh, that we can use and show you there, a working demo. But in its black variety, it's actually a cold storage wallet uh, that is safe, uh, that stores a variety of currencies inside of it, and so it's also marketed at parents. And then the fourth uh, element of the project is this payment card, which allows not just the children to spend a uh, while in their world with the supervision uh, of uh, their parents, but also the parents to spend uh, the other currencies that they have uh, in their own uh, grown-up version of the wallet. You know, we affectionately call this the big business of tiny money. Uh, I've been in the uh, early education sector for five years and built a successful company off the back of, uh, of it. And uh, we know that there are 400 million uh, affluent families in Japan, uh, in Korea, where I already uh, have offices with another business, uh, the UK, the EU, and the USA, and uh, that spend on average $15 per week on pocket money. And what we're after is a very small portion of uh, this market, which is 1 million uh, families onboarded to our system by 2023. So a good place to, to start and explain why we're here, why we think we're the best people to uh, uh, solve this really complex problem is to give you an idea of where we were last year when we began. So, you know, we were riding on a high at the end of 2017. Uh, the company that I'd built, uh, Prima Toys, uh, had reached uh, $8 million in revenue that year uh, with less, uh, just over a million dollars in investment. Uh, we had introduced computer programming to over a million children uh, in 180 plus countries. And I was fortunate enough to be uh, named as uh, the, uh, uh, in the Forbes 30 under 30 uh, social entrepreneurship uh, heading the category uh, for Europe. And I guess the team was sort of doing really well too, right? They were working on really cool projects. They were working on spacesuits for NASA. They were working at Apple. That uh, Matt Brown had spent uh, four years working for Journey Ivy in the experimental interface design division. Uh, we'd built payment systems for PayPal. We led uh, uh, transformation for Visa. Uh, we came from really cool places, and so did our advisors and investors. Um, Investec, for example, is one of our investors through one of their funds. Uh, we have uh, former JP Morgan MDs. We have the founder of Edu as well. We have uh, the uh, chief commercial officer of Ditto, which is a challenge bank in France. And, um, and we thought, well, I think it's safe to say that we live in a debt-driven society uh, where financial education isn't taught enough, and too many young adults uh, end up entering the world without understanding what financial uh, uh, responsibility is about. And uh, because we know uh, from our work with uh, Prima Toys and the Kano computer uh, that uh, um, it's possible to teach very complex concepts to children really early on in their lives, 
uh, we actually know uh, from a study uh, by the University of Cambridge that uh, by the age of seven, children would have developed certain habits that are going to impact their financial choices for the rest of their lives. And, uh, and so we thought to resolve, uh, solve this issue uh, with a new uh, piggy wallet. But let's look at piggy banking. What is actually piggy banking? Piggy banking is the, um, the practice of introducing financial education to children through the dispensation of money in its smallest denominations, 1Ps and 2Ps for incentives or rewards. It's not just 1Ps and 2Ps, it's also pounds. It's 2 pounds, 3 pounds. And the problem with current piggy banking uh, with physical money is that, first of all, physical money is limited to physical interactions. This does not reflect the globalized family environment in which we live in today, where members of the same family unit may live in different uh, countries or in different continents, for example. The uh, second uh, issue that we see with physical money is that, uh, at the moment, the current piggy banking paradigm is very limited. It's only about spending, uh, uh, sorry, saving and spending. And we think that money is actually a lot more dynamic than this. There is uh, also exchange, there is modeling, there is understanding money as money that you spend, money that you save, and money that you invest. And the third problem that uh, we saw is that even though some digital uh, piggy banking solutions exist, uh, such as GoHenry, Osper, or DigiPiggy, which was a, a, a Credit Suisse product launched in Switzerland, is that they're rubbish. They charge really high fees. They don't allow for these microtransactions to happen uh, cross-border and cross-country, so they don't cater to globalized families. And, uh, and they fundamentally are not really providing a piggy banking experience. So what we sought to achieve is a hybrid solution that gets, uh, that sort of combines the best of both worlds, kinesthetic learning uh, with a really beautiful piece of hardware designed by John Marshall, uh, who's also the design of the London 2012 Olympic torch, as well as uh, probably some of the most transformative uh, education technology products out there in the market today. And, uh, uh, but that takes advantage of the convenience of uh, digital uh, gaming. And ultimately, uh, why we bid the way that this uh, system hangs all together is by recognizing the family as a microfinancing family network. In other words, every one of these uh, piggies represents a child. And around this child will uh, congregate a list of family members that can all take part in their financial education. And so the more units out there in the world, and the bigger those family networks around uh, the, the, uh, the device or the child, the stronger our token economy gets and the more demand there will be on Wallow. Ultimately, I think we've created something that really does create a, a genuine on-ramp uh, into cryptocurrencies by a demographic that otherwise would have never thought about uh, moving into the space uh, by uh, using uh, education and uh, child education as, the, um, as a sort of, uh, as a starting point. Now, a little bit about our token economics. I'll just give you some of the highlights, and we can maybe pick it apart with some of the uh, questions that you might have at the end of the presentation. But we have 675 million tokens. Uh, the we have fixed supply. The market cap at ICO is going to be at uh, uh, less than $10.5 uh, million, uh, which we think is a, uh, a very positive thing. 70.3% uh, of tokens are going out to the community. And uh, because of the, and this is all uh, thanks to the really long-term uh, lockup uh, systems that we have in place that are also tied to device sales. Our hard cap is 8.85 million. Uh, I think we just want uh, enough uh, funding to move this product uh, into, the, uh, into the public, and that's our goal uh, for the moment, uh, and to see that technology, and our price per token is uh, 12 cents per token. Uh, we're going to be running an ICO in September, and um, as for the uh, uh, revenue model, uh, of course, uh, we have the hardware sales. We sell the devices at 60% uh, profit margins, but the majority of our revenue model actually comes from the spending and buying of Wallow uh, through uh, the card and through the exchanges and through the top-ups and through the in-app purchases inside the game. As a, as a business model, we are 20% hardware and 80% software. We also have uh, access, because of our other businesses, uh, to uh, over 10,000 wholesale and retail partners globally that already sell our products, like the Cubetto playset and the Kano computer. 
uh, you recognize some of these names, uh, which we already sell in through. And our goal is to uh, move into APAC, uh, Europe, the US as well, of course, and the UK, and to sell 1 million units by 2023, which is a number that we've already achieved with our other products. And so we know the, uh, uh, how to get to uh, these 1 million customers. Something that's very interesting about our marketing model is that 200 million tokens are divided amongst the first 1 million units that we're going to sell. And so that means that, and these uh, 200 uh, wallows are earnable. They're not just given for free. Uh, so they can activate network effects that uh, increase and expand our community. But that also means that the first 1 million buyers are fundamentally buying a product with money inside of it. We have some great traction. Uh, we've already uh, raised $1.6 million uh, in pre-sales from pre-sales buyers. Only 500,000 uh, of those have come from uh, equity deals. We have over 26,000 uh, Telegram community members that we've achieved through smart airdrops uh, and uh, uh, bounty programs. And uh, <coughs> more importantly, I think that we have uh, over 23,000 uh, newsletter subscribers uh, and over 20,000 uh, whitelisted members to take part in I ICO uh, in September. We also have an MVP product. We're one month ahead of schedule setting up the supply chain and going into production. And we already have uh, live demos working. I think something else that was really cool is that on the 7th of June, we won an uh, ICO race in Lugano, which was the biggest ICO competition uh, to date in the world. We won $600,000 in investment. Uh, we also uh, beat 160 other ICOs for our concept and our product, and uh, I think because of our team, most importantly, some of which are here in the room, and I'd like to point them out at the end of the presentation. Uh, but we also won a guaranteed listing on Bitfinex, which is going to be the uh, first exchange on which Wall is going to be traded. What's on, uh, you know, what's good for you here in the room here with us today? Uh, we have uh, uh, tokens available at 25% discounts in pre-sales. And for a minimum of $100,000 in investment, we also provide with some units. So you can also help uh, in the success of the project by uh, sending them and distributing them amongst uh, your own community uh, of friends and family and uh, professional community. So. Thank you very much. I'd like, obviously, to thank my team who are here, uh, sitting over there, John, who's demoing the product somewhere, Adam and uh, Gary, uh, who also uh, heads investor relations. And uh, so you can also talk to them, follow the pig. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Great presentation and branding and uh, questions. Can, can you explain how the wallet works? So this wallet serves, I guess, three purposes, right? So for a child, this becomes a remote, first of all, in which they can interact within the game. The second uh, use of it is like a Wii remote, right? The second use of it is that it's a notifier. So I can, uh, I can receive notification of my balance of receiving tokens or receiving coins from anywhere in the world without having to be glued to a screen or attached to the game. And the third use of it is as a cold storage wallet, which in its black variety that John uh, has in his hands over there explaining is just a, a brilliantly designed uh, cold storage wallet for adults. So, so I've got three kids. So yeah. this could be like the way I pay them allowance? That's correct. So and then can I tie that to chores and, and other things? That's the whole point of it, right? So you can give money within the game to your children in three different ways. You can do one-off payments, you but also other family members that you allow into your network. You can give them one-off payments, you can set recurring allowances, and uh, you can also send uh, money for special occasions and uh, sort of time. <laughs> uh, but you can also set uh, chores that they can complete, and they can receive these chores, they complete them, and then you release the wallow. In, in, in terms of paying fiat, can they go to the store and use that to spend? So um, we have a card. And I think a card becomes the universal symbol of spending in the real world. But they can also do it online. And we, have, uh, we work with exchanges. So when you actually go to spend uh, your money in a shop with a card, for example, it'll exchange your wallow for fiat. And you can use the fiat to, to spend uh, in the real world. And, and I mean, um, the last thing, which is, which is really hard, is the price fluctuations of the underlying asset. Like, how do you how do you manage that for a kid? Because that that would be one really hard concept for them to grasp. So, so I, I pay you, and and am I giving you fiat, or am I giving you token, or or what? So, 
So what you do is, as a parent, you top up on Wallow, and you can then, let's say that you buy $50 worth of Wallow, because that's all you're going to need for the next six months, and you can send tiny little uh, denominations here and there for chores or as a recurring allowance. So um, in the game, so there's three ways that you can spend uh, Wallow. In game, for things that children want, so they'll want a, an update for their avatar, uh, for, their, for their little pig inside the game. Uh, they'll want to buy a new tool, etc. Um, and the prices of these digital objects inside the game will adapt with market prices. So it's, uh, uh, it doesn't become prohibitive as the price fluctuates. In the real world, of course, there's fluctuation. We think that we're going to reduce this anyhow by uh, providing some wallow with every one of the first one million purchases. Um, but uh, I think ultimately fluctuation is something that we're going to have to uh, accept as a norm in cryptocurrencies. I don't I personally don't believe in stable coins, but, um, and so I think it is a valuable lesson to learn. Interesting, thank and you. Time, and you know, timing as well, with fluctuation comes timing and uh, How much and is each one of those gonna cost? So for the pink one, uh, it's gonna be uh, sub $100. Okay. Um, at the moment, we are at uh, $79 uh, based on the bomb that we have, and the adult variety is gonna be below uh, $120, uh, but uh, we're pitched to uh, compete against uh, Ledger, and uh, the trezels uh, for, for the black device. But they're wireless? Yeah. Cool. Where do you produce them? Through a bag. <laughs> <laughs> we produce them in China. So we have a uh, supply chain in Shenzhen, where we already produced uh, some of the other products that we have here with us, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to look at them. And it's, uh, we're now starting the process, but at the end of it, it becomes a fully scalable supply chain. And then there's a distribution network with uh, uh, I guess, um, shipping nodes in, um, in Chicago and in Tilburg. And uh, the other thing that uh, is worth mentioning is that we also have the support of uh, some uh, our offices in uh, Korea and Japan and Tokyo. So if the child is going to be the owner of this wallet, how are they going to get KYC through the printer? She needs a mic. <laughs> KYC for children. KYC for children, yes. The adult is the owner of the wallet. The parent is the owner of the wallet. The parent gets KYC'd in the same way that they would with Tide Bank, for example. And KYC happens at the point in which a parent wants to either buy in more wallow or sell it and spend it through the card. And so will the other family members. And when the child is old enough, they inherit the wallet as the parent chooses. But the child is basically protected in a walled garden that is controlled by the parent. And so nothing within the game uh, is, uh, it is, it is something that the parent doesn't want in there. And nobody else can send it wallow other than those who the parent has approved to be family members that can sit within the microfinancing network. So, so, um, Do you I think, okay. yeah, so, so game is obviously an important part of your strategy, right? Yeah. Are, are you thinking that you guys will be the proprietary game developer? Are you going to open it up and let uh, kids buy crypto kitties on it or um, you know, and, and the second part of that question is where do you draw the line? Because uh, young kids are okay with playing young kid games until they don't think they're young kids anymore and then they want to go play Destiny or Call of Duty. Or So like, are you going to have tie-ins to, to other game developers or Wax or any of these other gaming things out there? Or is, is that openness not part of your strategy? Of course, I mean, that's, that's, that's a huge part of the strategy, right? The way that we see it is that Wallow has a much longer lifespan than Pigsby does. Pigsby is the first product, it's how we introduce Wallow Token, it's how we build the business, and then we also allow different developers to come in. Uh, we also integrate Wallow inside uh, other uh, products. We have a couple of announcements uh, that are going to happen later on in the year that are very exciting, but we want to allow other brands to also introduce and utilize Wallow within their system as well, um, all within this family tech uh, realm that we have. And also we recognize that, uh, that the child, uh, as you said, as they grow up, so does their uh, potential for liquidity because an eight-year-old can earn and spend more money than a six-year-old and a ten-year-old more so than an eight-year-old but they also want to do different things and this is probably one of the reasons of why we designed this product to be like this right if you look at the digi piggy by swiss uh, credit swiss it's a toy it's like this round kind of chunky piggy sort of toy that a teenager is not going to carry that around and uh, and sort of uh, utilize it in a shop whereas this is a cult object designed by one of the uh, world's foremost uh, industrial designer, uh, industrial designers here in London. And uh, we think that this is going to become the symbol of piggy banking or piggy walleting as we 
I uh, like to call it, around the world. Hi, um, Filippo, great presentation. I love the concept. I'm now kind of feeling conflicted because it's a digi piggy wallet. So it's for my children to save money, yep. but you've got in-app purchases, which I hate. So that's one point. Uh, you mentioned how much you've raised. Your website says you've raised $6.1 million. That's correct. So is the website true or the amount you said just now, which was 1.2? Sorry, it was 6.1. That was, that was my mistake. Okay. It's and you only want to raise 8.8? 8, 8. 8.8, 8 .8, yeah. So you only need 2.7 more? We don't need that much more. Okay, no. thank you. Uh, well, I, w I wanted to uh, maybe address the inner purchase aspect of it. Uh, you don't have to engage into that. So the way that we're developing the entire system is so that the parent is fully in charge of what the child can see, what the child is exposed to, what the child can buy. Personally, I don't have a problem with inner purchases because I think that it's things that matter to my well, child. As an investor, I quite like it because it means that it's going to increase the value of the company. Not as a me saying I'm conflicted. I like the idea yeah. that you're making money, but I don't want it to be at the expense of my daughter. So I agree. I agree. So a, 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 as a parent, some enough purchases I like, some I don't. And I think it's all about giving that power to the parent to determine what that world looks like and not the child. So you're not just a... Uh, uh, Okay, well, so this is a smart, piggy bank, let's just say. Piggy wallet. Piggy wallet, piggy, piggy. So when I was Trademark. a young guy, I used to have from Lloyd's CSB, I put a pound in, I knew there was a pound in there, yeah. all right? And I think we all have this when we're a little bit younger. Um, so let's say I put 100 into that, and my chart builds up and builds up, and it's intrinsically linked to a cryptocurrency. Yeah. And then the market suddenly goes, don't like this, we're going to go into a bear market, and all of a sudden it drops by 80%. My yeah. one pound's now worth need 20p. So my poor daughter has now had one pound's worth of, uh, of my savings put into her account. It's actually now worth 80% less. So you are essentially, you know, how, how would you hedge against that? It's a very good question, right? So I think that we need to draw the distinction between a savings product and a financial... So it's, not a it's not a piggy bank, is it then? It's a piggy wallet. But let me, let me okay. uh, uh, make this difference. There's savings product where I would say, yeah, sure, go and save money for your child's uh, college fund or education fund. And there's a financial education product, right? So what the, the token allows you to do is that with very few cents, even if it's fractions of tokens, it allows you to play and to learn while playing. So which you can do with very few tokens. And uh, the, uh, sorry, Adam's making gestures. It's Oh, there you go. But uh, um, it's, uh, uh, and so whether the price fluctuates or not, you'll still be able to access the same level of play and the same level of engagement and entertainment. And that's what the system is for. The system is not a hard savings product. If you want to save in crypto, you know, save with something else. But if you want to play and you want to learn and you want children to get that, that value, this is for you. I guess I would add that the... Uh with a long uh, tail of uh, you know giving something to a child who's five or something, it certainly has been generationally where people would give one share of Coca-Cola. Now, obviously, that could drop 80 percent too, but uh, it also could go up c c substantially more than a passbook savings account at 0.1 percent or whatever the interest rate is these days. And there's never yeah. been now that we just came came off of a 70 percent, 80 percent drop in crypto. Uh, there's never been two in a row. So uh, the odds of uh, you know, the average uh, um, crypto going down another 80% and staying there for the next 20 years uh, essentially means that it's the death of crypto and it's just going away, period. And I think most of us in this room probably don't buy that. Anyway. But think about it this way, right? But that wasn't financial advice, right? No, <laughs> not financial advice. How many opinion. How many of you are familiar with a uh, I'm not giving financial advice on Coca-Cola either. How many of you are familiar with uh, a platform called Roblox? Or it, it any, any game with in-app purchases, whether it's for teenagers or young adults or whether it's for really young children, once you receive that money and you've played with it, it's gone because you've just bought objects, knives and suits and whatever for your avatar that don't really exist there and that don't really go anywhere. And so, and we spend money on those things for our kids. Well, like, you know, we're suckers. We give our kids anything that they want and to them that matters. So I think it's a fallacy to think that to them it matters how much their money is worth in terms of buying a bicycle in the real world or a football because they're buying stuff that we don't even, that we don't comprehend. 
I don't understand why my child would want to buy some new boots for his, uh, I guess, uh, avatar on one of the games that he plays. But he does, and he saves money for that, and then he spends it, and that's it, and it lives there. So, um, yeah, it's, it's about, it's, it's all relative. Just one remark from my side. I think it's very important that, peop uh, that, that children learn to lose. Uh, I would not um, protect my daughter. She, she could lose everything in that game, of course, <laughs> only not in real life. Um, because it's like, you know, an animal dying or so, it's just a part of real life. And um, uh, I think a lot of parents pr overprotect their children. And um, unfortunately, uh, the real world is different. It will be even tougher over the next years. So I think... Um, <laughs> well, that depends really of <laughs> how, how, how much you give your daughter. Okay, well, we're going to move along now, and uh, we can uh, discuss uh, passbook savings versus crypto investing outside. What, one more question? One more? Okay. Two more. Last two. Okay. Oh, thank you. We're, we're a few minutes over, but... Philip, just, just perhaps give you some, uh, some thoughts on how to handle it as an objection. Yeah. Um, your opening statement was about educating um, children. Yes. Um, I think there's a greater challenge educating um, us and the media. <laughs> and if you actually look at what would happen if you actually took a an international portfolio of equities and international bonds, and then actually put 49.5% in bonds, 49.5% in equities, and just 1% in Bitcoin over the last five years, and then every time it went up or down, increased or decreased it, you've got a 32% increase in your Sharpe ratio. Okay. Which is really important. If you're not sure what a Sharpe ratio is, that's maybe one place to start, because it's what institutions look at, a risk-adjusted return. And that's why I think what you're doing is really, really interesting, because it's exposing people to that sort of information, which they don't talk about, but institutions and institutional money managers look at it all the time. I, was it worth having that volatility, that up and down, the zig and zag, falling and rising? Have you been suitably compensated? And over the last five years, you have been. So looking at the performance over a longer period of time. Don't, don't look at the number, the, don't look at it's gone up by 10%. How has it gone up? Okay. Look, look at the volatility. Go back to your maths classes and look at bell-shaped curves, yep. standard deviation returns. It's really, really relevant when it comes to non-correlated assets, which is what cryptocurrencies are, but most people aren't talking about it. But institutions, that's why they're getting into this space, because they realize it's not correlated to bonds, property, or equities. So it's a really important thing for us all to understand, because it's actually a big, well, big reason. ratio classes for five-year-olds. Uh, la last question. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no? Same one? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you've all had a good afternoon. Hey, thank you, Pigsby.